Praise the Lord. Today's topic is, you know, taken from Philippians chapter 3, verse 13 and 14. But I would like to read uh, verse 12 also. The title of today's topic is straining forward. Straining forward means, uh, which in the Greek means to stretch yourself out towards something. You know, or to push yourself. You know, you don't just sit back and just say, okay, it will happen. But you are encouraging yourself, pushing yourself to look forward, to strain forward for something great. Amen. So let me read out quickly from Philippians chapter 3 verse 12 to 14. It says, not that I have already obtained all these or have already arrived at my goal, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead. I praise on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now, you know, when we focus on verse 12, you know, part 12b and 13a. It's talking about pressing to take hold, to strain forward, to press on. And Paul, still Paul hasn't recognized yet, you know, he hasn't yet attained his potential in Christ. And he knows that, you know, his service for Christ is not going to be easy. And he himself recognized that it is going to be so difficult and there will be a lot of challenges. The calling that Jesus gave him. The, the, you know, the race that he was supposed to. But over here he says that, but I press on to take hold of that word for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. He's working on it. You know, our day-to-day -day life, different challenges. We're working on it. We're working on it. We're pressing on the goal that Christ has given us. This is a journey on earth that we are doing. So Paul is clearly reminding us today in Philippians chapter 3 verse 12 onwards. He's reminding us that we have to press on, hold on, and wait upon the Lord. And continue to press on with that belief and that faith in your heart that yes, he's going to do something great in your life. And let us not give up. It is not easy. It is not easy to really walk in that path of faithfulness. It is not easy. It is easy for me to preach. It is easy for us to share and encourage others. But when it comes to you, when you face yourself, it is not easy. But the good news is, Jesus, the Spirit of Lord Savior Jesus is within us. Is living within us. The Holy Spirit is living within us. And He is there for us. Amen. And He is going to strengthen us. And He's going to revive us, renew our strength. Even though you're feeling so down, even though you're feeling so tired, hopeless, you know, God is there for you. Amen. Amen. Now, over here, when we read and meditate on these, you know, verses, um, we see here, you know, the verse, there is one word, you know, word that has been emphasized on it. Press on. In an IV and uh, an RSV. And in uh, K, uh, KJV, it's written, follow after. When we translate you know, um, the Greek word is called dioko. It's often translated as persecuted. Yet, it means to move rapidly and decisively toward an objective or goal or to press on. So, the, the word behind this dioko means actually to chase after something. That, you know, and who is that? We have to chase after him after Christ. Amen? Amen? Uh, you know, when we really meditate on this you know, verse, you can, uh, we can relate from the story of David's life and his army and Saul's son's army. And uh, we can read uh, from 2 Samuel chapter 2, verse 12 to 23. When you read that, it talks about here, Abner, general of for King Saul's son, Ishbosheth, loses Many troops in a battle with David's men. Then Ashahel, brother of David's general, chased Abner, turning neither to the right nor to the left. 
as he pursued him. The Bible records, Asher, Asher, sorry, refused to give up the pursuit. You see here, when I was reading ahead, you know, Asher, he lost his own life. Not knowing that if I chase after this guy, you know, I can lose my own life. But he continued to chase. He continued to pursue and press on. And he tried, he gave, he gave his best to kill his enemy. But at the end, he lost his own life. You know, maybe sometime when we, you know, press on or try our best, maybe it's not necessary that we have to always win the battle. You know, you can lose the battle, but God is there. God is going to strengthen you. There is always a reason behind. I remember my driving test. The funny thing was my student was behind me. Class 10, class out student. <laughs> and his teacher is standing in front of her. And I was just going inside to give the theory exam, you know. And I was so nervous for the first time in my life, so nervous in front of my student. I was like, okay, I studied, but what all questions is going to turn up? And somehow I passed uh, the, you know, the theory, but when it comes to practical, and I, you know, go through all the <laughs> circle and all the test. And, uh, and I went and ran and I asked that officer, sir, can you tell me, am I pass? Am, am I done? Give me a green signal. He says, sorry, sir, you fail. <laughs> I said, no, I did all the formalities that you asked me. He said, no, no, sir, you did overtime. And I was so discouraged. I was telling Christy that I'm not going to go for this driving test again. <laughs> But let me tell you, she really encourages me. And she said, no, you can do it. Go back. And second time I was literally praying, literally praying in tongues and saying, asking God, God, help me, help me. And I was driving. But thank God I passed. And I have a driving license. I'm talking about two years back. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So that's how, you know, sometimes, you know, the battle is not always in our favor. You lose the battle sometimes, you know, and it's not necessary that, we're talking about the battle, big battles, you know, or all the all kinds of, you know, difficulties in your life. It can be a small battle in your life. You know, you can fail it and you might, like, you can get discouraged. You know, some other people are going ahead of me. But why? Why me? Why am I still here? You know, you can question that. So, now you see here, Paul is definitely reminding us again here to continue to pursue here with the same zeal. That he had, you know, when he was not saved, the same zeal that he used to persecute Christians and the church and the people of God. And with the same zeal, double zeal, he, you know, he was ready to serve the Lord. Amen. So he, that's why Paul is telling us, reminding us, even though you have to go through all kinds of challenges, all kinds of problems in your life, do not give up. Do not give up. I'm here. I'm here. Amen. When we read in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 9, Galatians chapter 1, verse 13, Philippians chapter 3, verse 6, talks about here, you know, to pursue. Again, the word dioko, you know, to pursue the Christ, our Savior, our Lord, our Messiah, and to not give up. Do not give up. It's, it's not easy, I know, when I'm facing these days, you know, the real, you know, challenges in my life. Of course, I was facing different challenges, but when I have given myself for the, you know, full-time ministry, it is another challenge. And it's a lot of, you know, emotions, spirituals, so many challenges are there. Um, but when I was just meditating on this word, it really revived me and blessed me and reminded me, hello, your life is all about Christ. It's not about you. It's not about anyone else, but it's about Christ. So, there we go. We have a purpose to live on earth. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. There's a beautiful word, you know, again from Greek. It's called kata lambano. I don't know whether I'm, whether I'm pronouncing correct or not. You know, means understand, perceive, learn, and comprehend. And the second verb that describes Paul's quest for Christ, the thirst for Christ, to hold on, to cling in the word of God and trust in him and you know receive him as your personal savior Jesus make it your own 
do not just live your life like this. I love the song, you know. I want to live a life like I know who you are. I want to live a life like I know who you are. I want to know. Actually, we have been talking about Jesus. We have been talking about God, Holy Spirit. But do we really experience Him every day, or are we just waiting for weekends or Sunday? Then, there, I'm going to when I'm going to listen from pastor or from other preachers. Then I can only you know feel Holy Spirit, or then I can only feel the presence of God. What about in your day-to-day -day life? Are you really experiencing the presence of God? Are you? Do you really know your Savior? So there is challenge for all of us today. See here, it, you know, Paul is emphasizing on this to continue to press on, to lay hold, to continue to hold on in Christ, you know, and to focus, stay focused on the race, the race that Jesus has given us. And deliberately over here, you know, the word has been played between uh, Kata Lambano and Lambano. Lambano means to make it, to make it your own, you know, and to win it, to attain it. Okay. So over here, let us, let us, you know, remind and, you know, and encourage ourselves. Sometimes we become so discouraged and our focus go out of the way and we are not able to understand why God is calling us and why am I here on this place? Why, why I'm doing this, you know? Still, let me tell you, we are, you know, we are, every day is like a journey for us. We are pressing on something. We are trying to do something, but many times we fail to do that. Many times, you know, we are not able to understand what God is trying to tell us and make us understand. And we become so hopeless. Let me tell you, I many times become so hopeless. I think that this ministry is not my cup, you know. To stand and preach is not my way, it's not my cup. To, to lead worship, to, is it all about, this life is all about all these things? You know, I, I, I used to wonder like that, ponder things like that sometimes. It's not easy. But let me tell you, Jesus is there for us. And when you really surrender your life, you're going to see something great and beautiful and you will experience something. And let me remind you the, the amazing, the divine encounter with Paul that happened in Damascus Road. That changed his life, right? So let us also ask God, let us also ask Jesus today to encounter us. We really need that encounter. We really need that. We're looking forward. You know, my prayer to God is like, Lord, yes, definitely. I'm going to see you in heaven. When I, well, I'm on earth, I really want to see you. I really want to experience you. And sometimes I pray like, God, just hug me. I'm tired. Just, just strengthen me. Just hold me. I want to feel you. Yes, you are there. You are there for everyone. You are there every time. You know, I cannot feel, but you are there. But I want to feel you. I want to experience you more deeply. You know, that should be our desire and zeal. And passion. Amen? Then only we will see that fullness of God in our life. Then only we will experience the goodness of God. You will be able to taste how good our God is. Amen? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Now when we go ahead in verse 13, B, it's written, running flat out in the great grace. Paul, Paul has not yet obtained his spiritual goal, but he is not resting or turning back. He is not. He's still pressing on. Let us read. It says that, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead. I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Let us, let us forget everything that happened. It doesn't mean that you have to literally forget your past, you know, but there are so many things that you, you want to forget. You want to forgive, right? You want to give up on things that does not please God. You want to forget that place or those people, those who always lead you to something that you don't want to go back again. So still, still we are straining towards something. We have, you know, 
stretching ourselves. We need to stretch ourselves. We need to pray. We need to focus on that heavenly things. We need to focus on that pioneer of our faith. The pioneer of our faith is only Jesus Christ. Amen. And let us read again. It says over here, one thing I do. Paul is very much focused and single-minded. And he just know one thing right now. I was just trying to imagine that Paul was known as Pharisees, Pharisee of Pharisees. He, was, he, he had, you know, done PhD, double PhD. He was very wise. He had power. You know, people used to respect him. But all these things, all those things was like a trust for him. Trust. It's not easy. Suppose today you are in the very high position. Can you call that position? Can you call that, you know, the things, the power that God is, I mean, you have with you right now? A trash? No, it is not easy to give up. But Paul, Paul says very confidently, all these things are stress. Only one thing I do is I press on, I focus on the things that God has given to me. And I continue to gaze only on my Savior. And that, you know, that is my focus. I continue to pursue and chase after him every day. So that should be, that should be our desire. That should be our passion every day. Amen. When we read verse 13, uh, C, a runner in a race doesn't keep looking back at who is behind him, lest he trip and fall on his face. Definitely. I was reading and trying to, uh, you know, read how these Olympians, you know, how people, athletes, uh, are selected for the Olympics game. It says that, you know, there was a suggestion. It says that if you want to be part of this game in Olympics, you want your children or, you know, daughter or son to train them when they are very young, when they are only three or five years old. And it takes at least eight to nine years to train, to train, to get ready. Imagine. To go and to be, you know, some, there are many thousands of people, you know, they are getting trained like for eight, nine years. And after eight, nine years, they are not selected. Right? Many of them are not selected. But I'm sure those people who, who never gives up, they will make it out. They will make it. Amen? So that is, that is, that should be our goal. Even though you have been in the church for 10 years, you've been in the ministry for 20 years, you've been, you know, serving the Lord for 30 years or whatever years you've been serving, you know, you've been reading Bible, you, you know things about God, but you can fail it. But you can fall. Paul is reminding us we need to continue to press on. We need to continue to look forward. We don't want to turn back. We remember the story of Luth's wife. The angels clearly instructed them, do not turn back. Just run, run, run ahead. Do not turn back. But Luth's wife, she wants to see that beautiful city, Sodom and Gomorrah. She wants to see that beautiful city, Oh, what is happening there? People are dying, fire. And she turned back, and what happened as a result of it? We all know. Immediately, she faced the consequence there. Amen, praise the Lord. Praise God. That's why people, those who have given up, you know, they always count their losses, their regrets, their failures. No wonder, till today they are defeated. Till today they have to go through these failures all the time because they tend to always give up. They tend to always look back and they don't want to move forward and do something you know, new and learn something new. The grace of God is enough for all of us. Thank God that we have forgiveness in Christ. Thank God that you know, his grace is enough for us. Amen. His grace, His love never fails. When we run to Christ, when we ask forgiveness, 
He's there to forgive us. He's there to accept us as we are. That's why Paul never looked back once. Once he encountered Jesus, he never looked back. He never said, I'm the Pharisees of Pharisees. He never says that I will go back and become Pharisee again. No. He, he went ahead. He pressed on. Even though he, people have beaten up him many times. He was jailed. He was behind the bar many times. And half of a year, you know, after accepting Christ, he was behind the bar. And he wrote all these epistles, right? In the jail only. He did not give up. Till his last breath, he did not give up. So, the choice is in front of us today. Are we going to give up when we face all these difficulties in our life? Are we going to give up or not? Let me recite you a very beautiful story. I was just, you know, doing some research on, we all know about uh, Mother Teresa, right? So Mother Teresa was born in Skopje, capital of the Republic of Macedonia, on August 26, 1910, which was previously part of um, Yugo, Yugo, uh, Yugoslavia, sorry, until they gained independence in 1991. And she arrived in India in 1929 and began her race in Dazzling. And she, when she arrived in Dazzling, because Dazzling is a part of West Bengal, she learned Bengalis and she started teaching in the school, St. Teresa School. And she took her first religious vows on 24th May 1931. And after that, after that, she founded Missionaries of Charity in Kolkata, October 7, 1950. And because of her, so many people were saved. She served the Lord selflessly. I'm, you know, I'm sure we all are inspired by her story, by her testimony, the way she lived her life. And definitely she's no more with us. She completed her race on earth in the year 1997, 5th of September. Are we willing? I'm not saying we all need to become like Mother Teresa, but the calling that God has given to us. Are we really willing to serve the Lord selflessly? Are we really willing to choose him today and say, Lord, I'm here. Receive, help me, strengthen me. Amen? Are we willing to really surrender, fully surrender and say, Lord, I give it all to you. This is yours. My life is all about you. I want to forget things that has hurt me badly. I want to for forgive people. I want to stay focused. I want to continue to seek you. Paul is also reminding us not to focus on these temporary things of this world. But he's reminding us and telling us today that focus on the things that is going to be with you forever. Amen? Praise the Lord. So keep your eye on the goal, the goal that you have, we have. Praise God. Amen? When we read 13D, verse 13D, it says, straining towards the finish line. How many of you were, you know, when you were in the school, you were part, have taken part in 100 meter race, 200 meter race, cross country? Okay. I was not very good with 100 meter and 200 meters. <laughs> I was good with marathon, you know, sorry, um, uh, this cross country. For three years, nobody could beat me up. For, I, I was winner for three years. I'm not trying to brag myself here, but I'm telling you the truth. <laughs> uh, I had learned the techniques. You know, some people, like for cross country, they will run very fast initially. And they try to run, you know, and press on, like, and within, you know, some few, you know, like not kilometers, or like maybe 500 meters, they are like, <sighs> tired, you know. But I'm like, continuously, you know, pressing on, and I'm focused, 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 focused. And they're tired, and they're like, when I see, okay, nobody's, like, a little bit, I want to look back and see, okay, nobody's there, you run fast as much as you can and get the ribbon or whatever they gives you and once you get the ribbon you don't want to stop you start your pace again charge yourself and say to yourself you can do it you can do it and at the end 
you you are not running like this but you are running like this because you want to make sure that you are there right so that's what god you know um, paul is reminding us you know there is the image for our christian for you know i mean race in our belief that we should continue to focus and stretch out strain towards something that god is calling us to do let us do that as a believer we need to really stay in that commitment and see ourselves that we are totally you know like 100% committed for what you are doing not slacking off no excuse no laziness practice prepare prepare you know continue to practice i really like uh, my brother amin about his you know musical skills i always praise and you know he always inspire me to practice i am very bad with my you know guitar practice but he is like he owns the guitar he he really owns the guitar he just love he just practice and practice and he knows what he's playing all the pieces all the chords and he owns it it's not like he is just 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 playing but he owns it you know that's how we need to really own this word of god and say this is mine this is for me this goal is for me the the goal that christ has given me is you know i have to press on i have to stay committed i have to stay faithful i don't you know there are so many other points that i want to carry on with this but i think the main purpose for today for all of us today is to continue to press on towards that goal towards that prize that you know we are waiting for that one day we all will receive the crown if you will not give up if you and i will not give up quickly let me remind you in first corinthians what paul is tell, talking about here he's talking about racing you know the race and the and about the boxing you know i love watching boxings and one of my favorite boxer is manny pacquiao he is only and only you know a eight division winner till today nobody has you know has record like him so he is very humble he loves god he loves jesus boxing is something that you know if i don't know many of you will not like it but i love it i love it when you when the boxer hit somebody and knock down even though <laughs> the opponent is facing a terrible pain but something you know we it's also teaches us that that's how you have to knock down your enemy not your neighbor but the enemy we all know the enemy that's how you have to stand firm and not give up sometimes the winner also knock down knock down by the opponents once or twice okay but when they don't give up they win the battle amen praise god praise god amen so when we read verse 14 pressing on towards the goal let us consider the final words of this powerful christian confession phrase by phrase let us let us read and meditate on this yes. let me just read once again i press on toward the goal to win the prize for which god has called me heavenward in christ jesus in christ jesus again the word dioko you know it's reminding us pressing on pursuing chasing running flat out hallelujah Amen. praise god and we all know that paul didn't run for the sake of just running he intended intentionally you know he was running towards the goal and that's why he said i have completed my race faithfully he could say that confidently the word you know greek word scopos translated very beautifully says goal or mark and the verb scopio which means to pay careful attention to look at something very carefully so whenever the athletes or any you know anybody boxer you know when they are boxing they have to really really stay focused they cannot see around here if they you know lose their focus they're gone right so we need to continue to stay focused even though even though 
you are going through a terrible pain or a situation or something that you are not, you know, you have not expected to come in your life. You have to stay focused. The, you know, last few days, you know, like since last month, my family, almost everybody got sick. And just a few days back, my brother, you know, my elder brother, James, gone through some test and... Uh, he came to know that he's got hernia and he's got UTI and this and that, so many other problems. Suddenly. But he has to accept. We have to accept. It's a part of, you know, our journey. But what we can do is just to continue to pray and press on and believe that God is there for us. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. So how many of us can say today that I have fought the good fight? I have finished the race. I have kept the faith in Christ, in God. And I'm looking forward for that crown of that righteousness which the Lord, the God has kept for me. How many of us can say that today? I think we should continue to stay focused and long and continue to seek and love the Lord and say, Lord, here am I. Here I am. Use me for your glory. Use me for your glory. I'm looking forward to, to you know, sometimes I say, Lord, just, just speak one word to me. One word. One word will change my, my day, my life. Your one touch is going to change my life. I don't want to remain like this forever. I want to be changed. I want to do something new in my life. I don't want to just continue to just walk and think and behave or, or, or do things like this. I want to do something new. With new passion, Lord, revive me, renew me. As, I'm, as I continue to run the race, strengthen me. Many people, on the way, they give up. Many people. But we don't want to give up. We want to stay focused. We want to continue to press, press on. O'Brien concludes here. He says that the greatest reward is to know fully and so to be in perfect fellowship with the one who had apprehended him on the Damascus road. And, the, and this prize, Paul wants his readers also to grasp. We want to really grab that. We want to really understand that that encounter happened with Paul. We really want to ask God, God, I want that encounter. I want that touch I really want you right now Lord 